This video will have a look at transmitter numbers. Transmitter number can be found in the T1 returns and also slip filings. The transmitter number, so like I say, the T1, FX, and T3 have a transmitter number. For T1, uh, the transmitter number when it comes up in the auditor is transmitter e-file number. And then for T3 and FX for filing slips, uh, transmitter number is required and has a different purpose. It's uh, an identifier that goes in every XML. So a T1 return requires an e-file number and it's supplied by CRA. I'm in a T1 here and I've got the auditor open at the bottom here and I can see it's got uh, 99173 e-file error. Thing is, this wasn't issued by CRA because I can't file this return. Um, so this was before it was sent to CRA. So what this transmitter e-file number element is invalid, it means you don't have an e-file number entered. So if you have an e-file number, well, just to start here, from profile, there's only two ways to file a return that you've prepared. You can e-file it using an e-file number, or you can paper file. There's no net file where you file without an e-file number. That's not available in profile. It's only available in software such as TurboTax. So if I do have an e-file number, I can go to e-file. Uh, we always suggest to have cap locks on. Uh, just from experience, we found that this is the this is the way to make the entry for the e-file number and password without having any issues. Okay, so this isn't a real e-file number, and I will we'll use the cap locks. We want cap locks on, and we don't want to use the shift key. I'll just enter a password. It's not real, just like the e-file number is not real. So I can enter the password, and once that's entered, that error goes. So the transmitter number in T1 is your e-file number. If you don't have an e-file number, uh, I just, in Google, type for a search for e uh, CRA e-file news, and this came up, e-file for electronic filers. If I click on that, it has information about the e-filing, and if I scroll down, there's a little hyperlink here that can start me on the e-filing process. So you, anybody can apply, any firm, organization, or individual provides tax preparation services. So anybody can apply for it. CRA does go through a 30-day suitability screening, but this is how you apply. And then, of course, once you get uh, the file number from CRA, you can go ahead and enter like I showed in the last step there. The transmitter number for slip filing uh, in the T3 return or the FX module has a different purpose. Uh, the transmitter number is entered in all XMLs that you send to CRA. The CRA issues the transmitter number. If you're only going to be filing one, uh, CRA says you can use a generic transmitter number, either MM and then six fives, or MM and six zeros can be used as uh, as a generic transmitter number if you only have to send one filing. I'm back in Google Chrome and I've typed in CRA transmission number. And if you want to get a transmitter number from CRA, you can see here where it says T619. Now this is a little bit messy form. The stuff you do not need to know, except there's a section here. So this section, it tells you you can use MM5, that's a generic. They recommend 555000 works too. If you are going to be filing a lot of returns, so more than one, you can request, you can call and request the transmitter number. Uh, you can also get a web access code if you don't have a web access code. Back in profile, the web access code can be entered in e-file options and it's under transmitter you can fill in this information and then you can put in you can put in the transmitter number either the generic or 
when that CRA issued. If you're going to be uh, trying to log on to the CRA XML server using your account number, you can enter it here. If you're going to be using the account number for your clients and their web access code, don't enter the information here. So we got the transmitter number. This goes in every file and to log into the CRA server, we've got the account number and the matching web access code. I hope you found this video useful. And for more support options, you can look at our website. It's profile.intuit.ca. And there's a support menu item there with more options.